Number one, Ibble Dibble here. Hello, friends. Welcome back. Last time we talked about Megan the Broken Teapot and mainstream media, the broken record. Speaking of forgettable, Megan's AI avatar introduced her family portrait photographer of choice for his TED Talk. I wanted to watch his TED Talk, but was definitely not going to spend $25 on it. Did you know that the real average hourly earnings for all employees in the United States in March 2023 is $10.99 an hour? Even at its pandemic peak in April 2020, it was only $11.74 an hour. These TED Talks are clearly not to help the average American understand the world of possibility and better themselves. So who are they for? Clearly, people making more than double, more than triple the average hourly wage. Have you ever actually paid for a TED Talk instead of just waiting for it to hit YouTube for free three years later? Let me know if it was worth it in the comments below. Misan Harriman is now in my sights. Let me know in the comments down below if you'd like me to make a video on how he was just your average well-connected finance guy. Not a black Brit or a black American, but the son of wealthy Nigerian parents who sent him to the best schools in the UK, married to a Swedish woman who only picked up a camera five years ago to profit off of BLM and network with Edward Enenfull as the token black fashion photographer at British Vogue and parlay his way into very highly paid creative directorships. As a competent, not talented, not special, not unique, simply competent, derivative, I would even say, photographer with fewer than five years of experience under his belt. But back to Megan's new face. She was on some kind of Zoom call. You can change your lip color, change your eyebrow shape, change your eye color, make yourself higher contrast, lower contrast, thinner, fatter, lighter, darker, smoother, even smoother, even smoother. <laughs> even smoother. That said, of course Megan has had surgery. She's in her mid-40s. I think she had a lot of work done prior to the Netflix special because she knew she was going to do her left eye tear. There were going to be close-ups. Though she did try to make it as difficult as possible to spot by doubling down with the use of intense beauty filters. This is not a focus, resolution, or lighting issue. Though they are sitting on the same sofa, in the same sunlight, at the same time, having the same conversation, we can see everything including the tiny little hairs on Harry's nose, yet Megan's forehead wrinkles mysteriously disappear on the left side of her face. Before I get rolling, I just want to say absolutely no shade towards Megan over getting her face done and done and done. You only live once. If it makes you feel great and doesn't hurt anybody else, do it. If cosmetic surgery was outlawed, these doctors would not change their specialties and pioneer new cancer treatments would they? Hero dreams of sushi, Ibble dreams of medical justice. We'll certainly never know. Also, obviously, Megan has made her living on her looks as an actress, as a living girlfriend, as a trophy wife. Again, whether you agree with those modes of making a living or not, if that's how she had to do it, we can all understand how looking good is a necessary investment. I believe on the regular, she has all over Botox, like everyone else, with specific focus on her giant size masseters. In older photos from before she knew the Botox trick, she usually tries to cover them up with hair styling, which she still does and this weird pose. When those are freshly Botox, she has a very doll-like jawline. When they're not, her face shape is not heart square, round, or oval, but trapezoid. I've already said in other videos, I believe she had three nose jobs. This is Megan at 12. We all know that if nature takes its course, the nose does not get smaller and more refined from here. Here, nose number one is again at age 15 or 16. I think as the classic American Sweet 16 gift, her dad paid for her first very subtle nose job. 
in this 2003 photo set, so the year she graduated college, it's the same nose, but she has her first set of upper eight veneers and she has breast implants, although I'm not going to show you close-ups of those. I think she also may have gotten an upper blepharoplasty. Those hooded eyelids are gone. All of a sudden we have a normal amount of lid space. A lot of people have commented about how odd it was that Megan's father keeps saying in interviews about her that he's sure her kids will have his nose and his eyes and his nose. I think he's fucking with her. I think most of the resemblance she bears Samantha is courtesy of a scalpel. And Thomas is basically taunting her, threatening to reveal to the world that Harry's children aren't going to look like what he thinks they're going to look like if he doesn't get a little money. It's also the year she graduated college. So who knows, maybe Megan decided she wanted to be an actress, supermodel, and got herself into credit card debt. She still had those nostrils in 2010 when she filmed her cameo in the Robert Pattinson flop, Remember Me, the role she only got because because her then husband was a producer on the film. I think the last time we see this Sweet 16 nose job is in the 2010 short film, The Candidate. It looks like she used the money to get them taken in. And that nose, nose number three, is the one we see in 2011's Horrible Bosses and 2012's Dysfunctional Friends. She got a lot of work with this nose. This is what she had for all of her Hallmark movies, Antisocial, Dater's Handbook, up through the first season of Suits. This nose is 95% of the way to what we see today, but I think after season one, she had a little extra money. She kind of resented being shot in three quarters and she just wanted the same thing but smaller and that's what we're looking at. Another small adjustment she made after that first season of Suits was getting an inch or an inch and a half taken off her forehead. With actresses and models this is typically done as part of a subtle brow lift to make their eyes look wider. Once they're slicing around a bit beyond the hairline anyway, it can easily be combined with a little bit of a forehead reduction. And this really changed her face shape. Like Botox, Megan gets filler but is either kind of inconsistent with it or times it to big events or she just gets so much and it makes such a big difference in her face that it's really noticeable when it's wearing off. She fills in her tear troughs. In the past, she's filled in parts of her nose bridge to get what they call a liquid nose job. This was trendy for a time to make the nose bridge look high, narrow, and straight. It minimizes the look of a dorsal bump. Camouflage is a too high or too low super tip break. But like the breast implants, she seems to have abandoned that. Most notably, she gets a lot of cheekbone filler. She has no cheekbones to speak of. And you can really see the difference when she's freshly filled versus when she needs a top up. When she's really in need of filler, she actually has sort of divots below her eyes on her cheekbone area. Now, ever since Megan was a kid, she had very well-defined lower face smile lines. These lines are deep, they're moving targets, and they cannot be adequately addressed by filler. So we saw her with them throughout her time as an actress, throughout her time with the royal family. Yet somehow magically, after she left, they disappeared, as did her nasolabial folds, and she looked 10 years younger. How? It's fat transfer. This is a surgical procedure, not injections. Typically women between the ages of 40 and 45, but sometimes older, will combine this with a mid-face lift. I don't think Megan ever needed a mid-face lift because she has that lantern jaw that takes another 10 or even 15 years to show sagging. I do think Megan has had one new procedure since the Queen's funeral. It's a Hollywood classic, and I think it's why she's wearing this new super straight wig that covers up the entire sides of her face fully. Absolutely no edge showing anywhere. I think she's gotten cheek implants. This amount of fullness at the apples of the cheeks is not something that can be mimicked with makeup like highlighter and contour. She naturally has very little fullness in her cheeks and even at her most pillow faced, her most overfilled, she never had this fullness in the apples of her cheeks. Those are implants.
Which do you like more, the Wallace Simpson Dior face or the I just switched to Nicole Richie's surgeon face? Or do you prefer the throwback mug? Do you think that angularity suited her and she shouldn't have ultra feminized? Let me know in the comments below. To be clear, I think Megan looks absolutely beautiful. I think her work was done in an incredibly tasteful way. Money well spent in my opinion. For me, Megan's peak was probably her tiresome UN speech, but alas, age takes us all. Okay, that's it. That's it for me today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Toodles.